Hello, in today's video, let's go a little further on our food order system and try and understand how we are going to structure all our lambda functions. In this video, we're going to immerse a little further on the implementation details of our food order system, specifically lambda functions and how we're going to implement them for different components in the application. Right? So, so far what we have gone over is what we can see on the screen here is we have the application design diagram and we have gone over the individual workflows and what they're going to look like. As well, we have replaced these individual workflows with the AWS components that we're going to use to try and implement those individual workflows. So one, another thing that we probably have gone over is uh, these are the different modules in Terraform that we're going to create. And this is, these are some of the tools that we're going to use to try and implement our infrastructure as code systems. So one thing that shows up here is Terraform and we have seen that we're going to implement a module for Lambda functions. So here we're going to talk about specifically of what that module in, uh, contains and what are the different components that we're going to use and what is the design going to look like. So we can try and we can create one module and apply that across the board for different functions that we're going to use and we can scale it and scale the application as we go as well. So this is a very important building block in that process. So this is more like a recap on the food order system that we're going to implement and more about what are the components and what are the technologies we're going to use. So, so far we have seen that. So far we have seen that we are going to use Lambda functions and how we're going to use them and what, what is it to like to use Lambda functions. There's one way to use Lambda functions which we have gone over so far. Another way is to implement it and scale it and productionize it. So we're going to look at how we're going to do that part and we're going to go over that process today. So let's start again with the Lambda console and we'll go over the Terraform code as well which we're going to eventually modularize. So Lambda console, if we go over it, so let's create a basic function again and we'll start building from there. So we create a function, we call it a test function and we create a simple hello world example. We'll go use Python and keep everything default. There's certain things that we will touch base on. One is code signing. Another thing is which we, once we are finished creating the Lambda function, which we'll touch base on is how we can use S3 buckets for hosting our Lambda function code. So here we create a function. And we have a function working. And as we can see, it is a simple function. And if we try and test it, it should respond with, okay, hello from Lambda. So I have taken this very specific code, uploaded to an S3 bucket. So let's go over that workflow on how we are gonna, instead of using the code in the editor over here, which, which we are not probably gonna do, is to using the code from an S3 bucket. So let's go back to that and try and upload from an S3 location. So over here, I have an S3 bucket, which has a lambda.zip. That is this, the same code that we just saw and tested. It is being, being packaged and zipped into this location. So you're gonna take that, it's something we're going to reference and save it. As you can see, it has some other uh, pieces that are being imported from my Mac machine, but I left their, their, them there for on purpose. So let's try and test it again. And if we see the type function succeeds, and it's pretty much the same code, but it is being sourced differently and from a different location. So that is one thing that we're going to use when we are starting to build our CI CD system is like, okay, our code is going to be eventually be deployed into an S3 bucket. There's one thing to deploy our code in an S3 bucket. Another thing is to ensure that once we have deployed our code to an S3 bucket, that is the exact code that is being used. That's where another service called AWS signer will come into place. So let's delete this function for now and we'll go over that signer workflow one more time and signer work workflow once and so that we can understand what our Terraform code and logic looks like and why it looks the way it is. So let's go back, we'll create a function and another thing that we said, okay, enable code signing. There's nothing here, right? So we go and create, and look at the signer services. Create a signing profile. Let's say test function. I'll remove the tags, make it as simple as possible. We create the profile. And at that point, 
will start will have the option of creating a signing job and it will say what profile to use is going to be this and then it would say okay what assets do you want to sign and so here we're going to identify which profile is going to sign it and which assets it's going to sign it and where is the signed assets going to be deployed i'm not going to execute that over here but i just wanted to go over that process so that we are ensured and assured that okay the code that we have deployed is the exact code that has been running in our production system which is very crucial uh, crucial and critical so that is what the signer job is going to help us uh, help us do that here so now if we go back to our original system these are three workflows or four workflows that we talked about another one would be a get workflow which we not listed here uh, we're going to add it eventually and that's done on purpose so these are various lambda functions that we're going to use so there's at least five to seven or eight lambda functions that we have counted here that we're gonna we're gonna have to use this code over and over again so in comes terraform and we'll modularize it so let's go over the code that we're going to use to create an individual lambda function or create a module all right so this is more like an example resource i'll i'll share this code in uh, in the link and the git repo so over here we have a couple of resources that we're going to do some of these are more like going over some of them again like creating an im role here creating an im policy also we're gonna go over creating the signer job that we just saw so if we look at it we're gonna create a simple lambda function call it a little lambda function and we're gonna reference the s3 bucket and the s3 key over here could be subfolders as well to the, to the exact location of the object and we're going to give it a function name, module handler, runtime, timeout, and the IAM role ARM. So that's basics, the basic definition of a function. And from that point on, Lambda should be able to execute that function. So it assumes that Lambda.zip has, is, is, has the deployed code that we need to deploy. Another thing that we see here is, and we have seen this in, in the past, is every Lambda function starts writing to a CloudWatch log group. So we're going to create a CloudWatch log group as well. That essentially will be a, a separate module or a sub module in this case so that if we went if we decide to use more features from cloudwatch then we can just move that to a different module and use that release directly from for, for that subfolder instead of having to call lambda function but if for the sake of simplicity it would be a separate module inside of lambda function for now so it will have a log group and the log group would be the name of the function in aws lambda and in this case we are going to do a retention as well that would help us uh, reduce the cost that we're gonna incur in running that lambda function and and, and run maintaining the runtime of that lambda function so here we have an im role so im role will have scs assume role we have gone over this once and we're gonna have the policy that is attached to that uh, uh, im role and it's gonna allow the service principal lambda to assume that role another thing that we have previously seen is the im policy would be like okay this is the default im policy i've copied it like this on purpose it's like okay create a log group and create log stream and put log events but as we see here we are going to create the log group separately from creating the lambda function and the lambda function doesn't necessarily need to create a log group so that is one piece of permission which will probably need to or will take out so this part here is to create a log group is not necessarily essential so we'll put in the create log stream part, put log events, and start log uh, sending those log events into the Lambda function ARN. So that is what we are gonna do for setting up the basis of the Lambda function. So if we look at some of these resources that we saw here, IAM policy and role can be its own function because there are other components that would need to create an IAM role and policy. So it better be its own module, right? So we're gonna keep that separate. CloudWatch log group, we are going to put it as a sub module inside of the Lambda module. And then if we decide to increase our usage of CloudWatch uh, features, then we'll probably move it in its own module. So that work can come as later. It would be a good exercise to go over maintaining code and productionized uh, systems. So something that we can, we, we should probably have that as a problem for tomorrow. So we move ahead from that. Signer jobs, something that we saw. So we're going to create these are the resources that we're going to use for creating a signing profile. This probably will be its own module as well or a sub module. I'm, I'm here to go through those details at this point, but as we go pro pro proceed, some of those things might and will change. So I'm going to keep that as loose as possible for now. So this would be replicating or going over the workflow that we saw on the console, which is creating a signing profile, 
we have a name prefix and we say okay this is the platform that is going to be using the signing profile and this is the config for that signing profile which says okay this is the only profile that is allowed to sign and the policy that we are using for signing the code would be either give a warning or enforce in this case we're going to say enforce it since we're trying to make it more productionized this is better to go over that as well and then next thing would be to create a signing job right so these these things would be running either separately in our uh, whole workflow for deploying code the signing job will probably happen before we deploy our lambda function so there will be dependencies listed there as well so we will when we design the module and design the ci cd system we'll go over that part but in this case we're going to say signing job and what it's going to do is it's going to allow this profile to be the the one that signs the signs the job and it's going to take code from our source bucket which would be very similar to our bucket here and this artifact here and uh, does this something that if we decide to make it more uh, uh, so controlled then what we can do is we can create an artifact and get artifact and github actions and then upload it to the lambda s3 bucket just for the signing purposes and take it out as well because we don't want to expose our code in any possible way that's one of the options that i think i would like to consider but at this point as lambda as we know that signing job requires it in the source and a destination s3 bucket so this is something that we'll probably have to do is like put it in in source bucket give the key give the version of that of that object that we want signed and put it in a destination bucket which will be used for running our code and then we're going to say ignore signing job failure false so that it is more like okay if it fails then we're not going to deploy our code so this would be the basis of running and deploying all of our lambda functions i hope you like this video please come back for more videos like these so that we can keep building on this series and please like and subscribe to this channel so that would be very helpful thank you so much